Welcome to the Engrafted Word, a division of Worldwide Ministries. Tonight, we're going to be discussing what an engrafted word is and what it means within our ministry. Engrafted means to incorporate in a firm or permanent way to implant. Our goal is to implant this word deep within your heart, deep within your mind, deep within your soul, deep within your being, that you might not sin against God, like David said. First, we're going to example, examine, though, is James 1 and 21, what God has to say about the implanted word, engrafted word. <laughs> okay. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity. Superfluity means excess of naughtiness. So it's an excess of naughtiness and receive with meekness. To be meek is to submit. It's a submission. So you have to submit and let the engrafted word, it says the engrafted word, which we know is to implant, which is able to save your souls. Let's look at the word able. Now, the word able means it has the power. So the engrafted word has the power to go deep within your heart and it has the power to save your soul. Isn't that powerful? <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, next we're going to look at what is the word and who is the word. Okay. Um, let's turn to the book of Revelations. Okay. Let's see. And that's 19 verse 13. We're going to look at why this word has that power to do this. And he was clothed, 19 verse 13, the book of Revelation. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Okay, so Jesus, his name is the word of God. If you notice, the word, the W is capitalized, just like there's a capital letter for Adonai, Jesus' name meaning master, the lion of Judah, Emmanuel meaning God with us, the lily of the valley, the lamb of God, and of course, Jesus with a capital J. So his name is the word. And that word has the power to go within us, to heal, to deliver, to set free. It's all power in his name and in his word because he is the living word. Okay, so we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at what David had to say about hiding that word in our heart because we have to hide that word in our heart. So let's look at Psalms 119 verse 11. One nineteen verse eleven. Isn't the word good? Taste and see. <laughs> we invite you to taste and see. One nineteen verse eleven. Okay, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. So once that word is hidden within your heart, you you have the power not to sin against God. So you have the power of salvation. Okay, you have the power to walk that straight and narrow road to make it into heaven. You have the power you need to get saved, stay saved, and to endure. Okay. Okay, next we're going to look at John 1, looking at the word once again. Okay, in John 1, it reads as follows. In the beginning was the Word. So in the beginning of time was the Word. With a capital W, once again, I iterating that the Word is Jesus. And the Word was with God. And Jesus was with God. He's the Word. And the Word was God. Jesus, we know, is God incarnate. He's the, the Son of the living God. And um, we know that He is God. He is a creator. Um, we also know that it says the same was in the beginning with God. So from the beginning of time, he was with God. 
all things were made by him. And without him, not one thing was made. So that's everything in the universe, everything on this earth, everything everywhere was made by Jesus Christ himself. Okay. Um, we're going to look at Genesis 1 and 26. We're going to look at God talking to his son like you might talk to your son or daughter, because that is his son, just like we're his sons and daughters. Um, and it says um, in Genesis 1 and 26, verse 28... Wait a minute, one second. And God said, let us make man in our image. So God is talking to his son and they're having a conversation together. And he's, you know, like you might say, let us go to the movies or let us bake a cake or let us make this or do that. He said, let us make man in our own image. Okay. So, once again, we're just showing that Jesus from the beginning was the, was the Son of God. And he also, we're, we're proving and showing how he's the living Word of God. Next, we're going to look at Hebrews 4 and 12. Okay, the book of Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, so we're going to look at it. When I see the word quick, what comes to my mind is a woman. When she's pregnant and she's carrying a baby, the, the doctors often say, have you felt a quickening? And what this quickening is when the baby is in the womb, you know, the baby is alive. We know it's alive from the beginning, but we, but there comes a point when a woman can actually feel a kicking and you can feel how it's living within your body. And that is 18 to 20 weeks in your first pregnancy, usually. And that could be possible because when a woman is a multi-para and that means that she's had more than one child or more than one pregnancy, she can feel the baby quickening or moving around um, 15 to 17 weeks. And what it feels like is a fluttering within the womb. And you feel the baby fluttering, moving around and everything. And they call that quickening. So anyway, um, when a woman is, her womb is tight, she feels it at 18 to 20 weeks. Once she's had that baby and the womb has stretched, she feels it sooner. Um, which makes good sense, 15 to 17 weeks. Okay, so we're going to read on. And that's Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. So Jesus, I believe, is the word of God. And he's on these pages and he's living. And he's quick. When you read the word of God, I have read the word personally and was not feeling well. But as I kept reading and reading and reading, Suddenly, I just felt better and better, this healing power in the Word of God. Now, we're going to look at the Bible. It says he sent his Word and healed them. Now, let's look at that. Okay, that's Psalms 107 and 20. Okay, 107 and 20. He sent his word and healed them. So God sends his word and he healed them. And I believe once again, the word is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And he's got that power, that healing power. And he did also delivered them from their destructions. If you look at it, think about Jesus. We know that God, he simply spoke and it was done. Let there be and there was light. Jesus, when he came down to earth incarnate, you know, God in the flesh, when he went to the tomb and he spoke, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. That's in John 14 and 16. Let's look at that. 
And that just shows you the power of the, of the spoken word. And um, we're going to look into that a little deeper in one second. Let's just do this first. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That was another scripture I was going to look at. Okay. Um, we're going to go back to that in a minute. Um, it's, I'm sorry. It's John 11 and 43. John 11 and 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Lazarus was resurrected. He came forth. He was quickened, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, he commanded with his authority, loose him and let him go. So, we, we can see the power that Jesus had. He had the power to call forth and raise the deaf, to send word and, and fevers just disappear like that and people be healed. And he's given us that power too to call those things forth that be not as though they were. We have that creative ability because as you know, in the book of Genesis, we were created in his own image. So God gives us that level of authority that we can send forth that word and people be healed. Okay. And just one last point that I'd like, just like to point out, and we read that in John 14 and 6, and it says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that once again, that there's power and life in that word. God has proven that it quickens just like that baby comes to life and is quickened. It resurrects. It has all the power in the word. Study the word. Use the word. Let it become engrafted within you and planted within you. Join us again for the engrafted word. This is all we have for today. May God bless you. Goodbye.